Welcome back survivalists. So today we're gonna break down what is inside this $30 Amazon survival kit. And I do like breaking down these survival kits so that you know what items you should include in your own survival kit if you're trying to build one from scratch. Now the other option is you could just press the easy button and order a survival kit online as well. And then use that as a starting place for you to expand on it and upgrade it. You know, this is a $30 survival kit. So you have to kind of set your expectations of what you're gonna get in here. According to them, there's 35 survival items in here. So it's less than $1 per survival item. So maybe you wanna buy a kit like this and then down the road, you buy a $50 knife that you replace the knife in here with. Or you buy a $100 Leatherman that you put in here as well. And you can use a kit like this as a starting place and slowly just expand on that survival kit as you get more money and you get more gear that you wanna to add to it. Now, if you go on Amazon, you will find a lot of survival kits just like this in that $30 price range. Now, full disclosure, they did send this kit to me for free, but it's not a paid review or anything like that. And I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion about what I like and what I don't like about this particular survival kit, but I will have a link to this kit down in the description below. So let's jump right in. And the first thing I wanna evaluate is the actual case itself. Because it's really with any kind of survival kit, there's two different approaches that you can go with choosing your case or your bag. They've gone with the more gray man concept, which is essentially you have a very bland looking case or a backpack that nobody would suspect is an actual survival kit. So something like this you could have in your car or in your home office and nobody would see that and say, oh man, that's full of survival gear. They would gloss right over it. Generally, this is the approach that I want to take. The other concept is that you could go with something just cooler looking, a little bit more militaristic or a little bit more tactical, or you could get something that's bright red so it's very easy for you and your family to find, right? They are two different approaches to it, but I generally like to go on the gray man concept. And so they've gone with a hard plastic case with a couple of latches here. Now I will say that I am not a fan of the latches that they have here. It is actually very difficult to get these open with the pad of my finger. I actually need to get two fingernails underneath these things to really open them up, or maybe one right there. It is not very easy to open this, um, but I will say that that's not a huge deal. That's not a huge deal killer either. You only have to open it, you know, one time or a few times. But if you open it up, you've got some padding on both sides, you've got all your gear in here. Now, I have not gone through this yet, so we're gonna be kind of doing an unboxing here and seeing what they include in their survival kit. And the very first thing that they have is a Mylar blanket. And I am a big fan of these, right? And again, this goes back that some of the most effective gear that you can have does not have to be expensive. You can buy Mylar blankets for a dollar, two dollars for one of these things, and buy an entire box for a couple bucks. And these things are super effective at reflecting your own body heat back at you. In many survival situations, your best source of heat is going to be your own body. And your goal isn't to generate external heat, your goal is to just contain your own body's heat and not let it kind of radiate out. And that's where these Mylar blankets really come in handy uh, for how lightweight they are and how effective they are. This is definitely something that most people want to include in their survival kits. Um, and if you're designing a kit for your family or for multiple people, make sure that you buy more than one of these Mylar uh, emergency blankets. So moving right along, the next thing that they have is this nice sheath with a belt buckle, and this is their knife. So yeah, overall, um, you know, I'm, my assumption is that this is probably a cheap knife. That's, that's my assumption. I will say it doesn't lock in place right away. There we go. If I kind of play with it, now it's locked in place. Um, so there are a couple things on this which I do like. One is here on the butt, it does have a glass breaker. So this would be great for a car emergency survival kit or to keep in your console or your glove compartment just because it has this feature. If you're ever in a car, you're flipped over, you need to escape, you can bust the glass with this little, little spike on the back here, which I like. Another feature that it has is this little hook knife here on the back. And what this is for is for actually cutting seat belts. So again, if you're upside down in a car, you have to get out, you can cut your seat belt to get loose, or you can use this, if you're rescuing somebody from a car, you can use this knife. Now you could probably also use this knife. It's a very similar design to what deer hunters use for gutting animals, right? If you're gutting a deer, you don't necessarily want to cut it open using your the knife blade because you may puncture the organs 
and it may spill bile out into the meat, kind of spoil the meat. So a lot of times they'll make a little puncture and then they'll use a very similar designed blade like this to rip the animal open. So you may be able to use that. It's probably not what it's designed for, but you could probably use it for that as well. And so as far as the knife goes, um, I mean, it, it feels solid enough. I don't want to knock it too hard. It's not loose. It feels pretty solid. Um, that's the locking mechanism right there. And I mean, for a survival knife, this is not bad. It also has a spring in there. It's a little bit of a spring assisted to get the thing open, which I am always a big fan of. Um, so let's see, can you open this with one finger? Yeah, look at that. It's a spring assisted um, knife there. So I do like that. So overall, this is a better knife than I was expecting in a $30 survival kit. It feels um, good enough. And I mean, again, you could always buy a kit like this and then go buy a $100 knife to include in this kit, or even a $50 knife. I'm sure this is probably, you know, less than $10 to buy a knife like this, um, just in order to make a survival kit like this work. But overall, I'm happy enough with the knife. So moving along, next thing we have here, this looks like a emergency bracelet, kind of like what I have on right now. Let's take a look here, so. So I am a big fan of these because it is just amazing how much paracord you can have uh, in a uh, bracelet like this, you know? And paracord comes in handy in a lot of situations. If you had to do um, a, a, a splint or something for somebody for first aid purposes, for shelter building purposes, um, for building a, a bow drill, you know, any number of uses, uh, having some cordage is very helpful. So just having the cordage alone, I'm a big fan of. Now they've got, looks like a fire starter built into it. I like that a lot. So let's see. So I gotta, I gotta, I'd have to rub this down a little bit, but they do have a little fire starter built right into it. Again, you know, this is probably like glued in there. So you gotta be kind of careful that you don't, you're not too rough with it, but I like that a lot. Um, yeah, this is definitely a good idea. They've also got a compass and a whistle. I think it's a whistle, maybe not. But they got a little cheap compass in there as well. It's probably better than nothing. Uh, but overall, yeah, having a survival bracelet like this, I'm a big fan of. Just having paracord in your survival kit, I'm a big fan of. Um, and then this is their fire starter as well. We'll see if they have any other fire starters. This may make a good backup fire starter. I wouldn't rely on this as being your primary fire starter. I'm pretty sure this is just like glued in there with like a little drop of super glue into this plastic uh, clip here. Same with this striker here. So I, I wouldn't rely on this as your primary source of fire starting, but as a backup source, I think it's great. And definitely having paracord like that or having something like this. This one here is actually Titan cord. So the cordage has a um, one strand that's used as tinder, has fishing line and has snare wire all built into the 550 cord here. So yeah, definitely having a little survival price like that, like this, very inexpensive, great thing to include in your survival kit. Uh, so moving along, very good. So we do have another um, fire starter, another ferro rod here. So again, this makes a good backup one, but this is going to be your main fire starter. And this is a pretty thick ferro rod as well. You know, sometimes in these survival kits, they go really small one, but they have a pretty decent size um, kit here. I like that they have the striker attached to it. And this looks like it also has a few other functionalities to it as well. You've got a little, you know, hex nut driver there. Um, you got a little bit of a, a ruler there. You probably wouldn't really use that stuff all that often. But yes, having a ferro rod and a striker like this is a great thing. It's an essential thing. This is definitely something you want to include in your survival kit. And again, these are not expensive. These are very, very inexpensive, but that is definitely something you want to include in there. So they've also got a tactical pen. So I'm not the biggest fan of tactical pens, just to be honest with you. Um, like they look cool, it sounds cool in principle. I'm just not the biggest fan of them. But what I do like is a lot of them have uh, a glass breaker at the very tip of them as well. So I do think that these are a good thing to have in your car just to puncture that glass if you are ever flipped over in a car. And I do, you know, I will agree. You know, there are some people who say that you want to have like pen and paper in your survival kit. Um, and I, I, I think that's an okay thing to have, a pen and paper and a survival kit. And so if you are gonna do that, you might as well get one that's a little bit stronger, a little bit more tactical. 
I think um, that was perfectly fine. Some of them have other functionalities to them. I kind of don't think this one has anything else to it. It's just a, uh, like a steel, a metal pen, I think. But I, I, yeah, I'm okay with this. You know, I'd say this isn't an essential thing to have in your survival kit, but it's still a nice thing. It's kind of a cool little gadget, cool little pen to carry around with you. Um, and I do like that glass breaking functionality of that. So they actually now have two different glass breakers in this kit. So again, this kit may be a great thing to have in your car and keep it in your vehicle. So next up is going to be a bellow. So a lot of people don't quite know what this is for, but let's say you have a, an ember in a fire, right? You can get down there and go and blow on it to get it up, uh, to get it going, but that can suck sometimes and it can be exhausting. But the bellow, you can get all that um, air focused much more on a specific spot and really get it going. A lot of bushcrafters, when they go out into the wild, one of the first things that they build, maybe not one of the first things, it's probably down their list a little bit, but one of the things that they build is a bellow like this out of a wood. Uh, out of wood. Essentially, they get a, a straight stick, they cut it in half, they carve out the center of it, and then they tie it back together. Now they've got a bellow. So they just have an ember down there deep in the fire. They can reignite their fire using a bellow like this. Um, and these things, this isn't an essential thing to have in your survival kit, but they're nice. This is definitely, this is um, a luxury item, I guess, to keep in your, your survival kit. And I am a big fan of them. You don't necessarily need a bellow like this, but this seems like it's probably pretty inexpensive as well. So it's kind of a, a little cheap aluminum thing. But a bellow is a cool thing to have in your bushcraft kit, I would say. Uh, so moving along, it looks like we've got some utensils here. There we go. So you've got your spork. You got a spoon, a spoon and a fork built in one. Ah, and you have a whistle. So I like that. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. You can get a lanyard to go along with it. So I do think that whistles are a good thing to have in a survival kit. I do. Um, especially if, you know, let's say you are out in the wild. You're out there for two, three days. You're probably dehydrated and you're starving. And you may not be able to yell out to somebody. Having a whistle can be very helpful to get somebody's attention. You know, I keep thinking back to Katrina, right? With Katrina, the floodwaters were 20, 30 feet high. People were literally stranded inside their attics or up on rooftops um, for days. And let's say there was a rescue boat coming along, you could try yelling at it, but if you had a whistle like this in that type of situation, if you're trapped in your attic, you need to get somebody's attention. I'm sure a lot of those people during Katrina would wish they had a emergency whistle like this. And then having the uh, spoon and the fork, you know, that's, again, it's not a necessary item, but that is a, a nice item to include, a nice item to have in your survival kit as well. And that feels like it's pretty solid. Like, I probably, yeah, that's, that's solid enough. Um, you know, that's just a nice thing to have in your survival kit. So moving along, I am not sure what this guy here is. Let's take a look. How do you open this guy up? Let's see. Um, oh, this is for holding onto a bottle. So like you could attach this, let's say to a soda bottle or a water bottle, and then you attach this to your belt and you can walk around and carry your water with you on the, on your side. I like that. That's pretty, pretty interesting. I'm pretty confident that's what that's for. I don't actually know, but I'm pretty sure that you stick your water bottle in there. That's actually really uh, pretty neat. It's probably going to be like, you know, padding up against you while you're walking, which probably get kind of annoying, but you could probably stick this on the X outside of your backpack as well. So I like that. Again, this is not a necessary item for your survival kit. This is uh, a luxury item. This would be something that'd be nice to have and include in your survival kit. Um, and again, something like this is probably dirt cheap, right? This isn't anything really complicated, um, but that's something else that you could consider putting in, in your survival kit. So next up we have, uh, so one thing that you do want is have some kind of multi-tool uh, feature. And so it looks like instead of going with a Leatherman or traditional multi-tool, they've gone with these little guys here and you have a Phillips head and a flathead screwdriver. And it looks like you can add these to a keychain and include these. And yes, this is definitely something that you want to include in your survival kit, um, especially if your survival kit is meant for an urban situation. Um, and I'm willing to bet that these two screws, um, screwdrivers could help you out in like 80% of the situations where you need a screwdriver. 
right? Most screws and um, are essentially the same. So I like this, especially if you're in an urban situation. Um, if this is for your car, or your home, or your um, office, the survival kit, yeah, I do think that having something like this is a great tool. They also have single objects that have, you know, both kind of, there's a couple of different routes that you can go with these. And they've gone with these two key designs, which I think is cool. Uh, the next thing is going to be a carabiner. Yeah, carabiners are super, super helpful, especially if you got a backpack or you're trying to attach something to your belt. Now, one thing uh, with carabiners is that a lot of them are pretty cheap and break pretty easily. Uh, this is probably a very cheap carabiner, so you probably can't have much weight on there. Definitely, I really doubt this could hold your own body weight. But this would be really for attaching um, objects to you, attaching objects to your belt, to your backpack. You may be able to do some stuff with some cordage with this. Maybe if you're trying to hang up a tarp for a shelter um, with that cordage, you may be able to use this carabiner like that. But yeah, carabiners are definitely just a nice thing to have. Again, this is not an essential item for a survival kit, but it is just a nice thing to have. So moving along, we've got a pocket watch. Now, I'm joking. I'm guessing this is going to be a compass. Let's open this guy up. Um, how do you open this guy? Oh, crap. I already broke it. Um, there we go. Yeah, so this is a compass. Uh, this thing feels very cheap. I'll be honest. It's very thin metal. Um... I've already broken this ring off of it. Not that that really matters. Uh, it may still function. It may still be perfectly fine and work perfectly fine. It just it just feels a little cheap. Um, but you know, it, not not everything has to be really expensive. And again, it's a thirty dollars survival kit, so you could buy a ten fifteen dollar compass to replace this one with. But having a compass, um, if you're building your survival kit for the outdoors, maybe if you're a camper or you're um, ATVing or something like that, or you're, you're a hunter, having a compass is definitely going to be very, very helpful. E even if you don't have a destination, you don't know what direction to go, just staying in the same direction, walking, will be very helpful. Saying, okay, I'm going due east. Um, a lot of times with the, if you're on unlevel terrain, it is very easy to not walk in a straight line, right? Your, your line's going to look very jaggedy if you look from like a bird's eye view down at you. Um, and it can be hard to like so, like consciously walk in a straight line, um, it, especially if you don't have any good frame of reference. So having a compass like this, I think would be very helpful um, in those types of situations. So yeah, definitely a compass. If you're building a wilderness survival kit, a compass is a fantastic thing to include in your survival kit. All right, moving along, we have a flashlight. All right, great. Oh, they've already got the batteries in there. Yeah, a flashlight is a great thing to have in your survival kit. I love that. And this is pretty freaking bright as well. Um, yeah, that feels like a pretty solid, uh, you know, metal flashlight there. Oh, wow, look at that. You can go from a wide to a narrow beam. Uh, I don't know if you can see that real well, but I like that a lot. That feels like a solid enough flashlight. Flashlights aren't expensive either, and it looks like it's an LED flashlight, so it probably saves the battery um, pretty well. It's all metal body, so you don't have to worry as much about breaking it. Uh, I'm happy enough with it. That feels like a solid, pretty solid case. It's got some cool features, a rubber button here on the back. Uh, yeah, flashlight's definitely a great thing to include in your survival kit, especially if you're building a home survival kit or an office or for your car or something like that, even a wilderness survival kit. I will say that uh, typically you don't want to keep the battery inside of that. I usually keep my batteries separate um, just so there's no like little trickle charge or anything like that that drains the batteries on you. But flashlight, great item to include in there. Next up is going to be one of these hand saws. So these, you see these a lot in survival kits. They kind of suck when you actually have to use them. I'm not going to lie. Uh, if you've ever tried using these things, they are a pain in the neck and they freaking take forever. Um, but, you know, if you got nothing else, I suppose it's good to have, um, you know, but just kind of know ahead of time that these are not fun to use. Uh, if you ever try going actually out there, and this is just like a very rough uh, metal cord here, but essentially, you know, you wrap this around a branch that you want to cut, and you just kind of go back and forth, back and forth, and it'll take you a, lo <clears throat> a long time to cut through a branch with one of these things. But nonetheless, you know, these things are very inexpensive, and I suppose if you got nothing else to use to cut through a branch like that, um, it, you know, yeah, you're not gonna use your pocket knife. So in a really bad situation, this could be a lot better than nothing. Um, so I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. Just kind of know ahead of time that using those things are not fun. 
So next up, we've got some fishing line and some fishing hooks, and it looks like a little fake crawfish in there. Uh, and again, this goes back to not everything has to be expensive, right? This is probably less than a dollar's worth of gear right here. This could be the difference between you eating and you not eating, right? Um, and it's super small, super lightweight. I'm, I'm happy to see that they included this. If you're building a wilderness survival kit, yeah, I'd say some fishing line and some hooks is a great thing to include in your wilderness survival kit. If you're building a survival kit more for an urban situation for your car, may not be as necessary. Um, but having this, yeah, this is a great item to include in anybody's survival kit. Next up, it looks like some jute cordage here. So you can uh, unwind this and use this as a tinder, I'm guessing, uh, along with your, your ferro rod over there. And it has multiple strands in there. Yeah, great thing to include. That's, that's the hardest part is getting that initial little flame when you're starting uh, a fire, especially if everything's wet out there. So having something like this as a tinder just to, just to get it going uh, is a fantastic thing to use. Um, and yeah, this is something like this is a great thing to include in survival kit. There's a lot of different um, tools out there that you can get. Uh, fire starter, there's... there's um, like some powders, there's like goo that you can get. There's a lot of different fire starters that you can buy. You can even make a few really good fire starters, but I think a fire starter like this and a ferro rod is a great, great addition to your survival kit. Um, and I'd say even if you're building a not a if you're building an urban survival kit, I'd say even having a fire starter like this is a great thing um, to include in there, just because the heat in the fire has so many different uses. So next up, we got some first aid, yeah. Again, great thing um, to include in a survival kit. You don't have a whole lot in this one. It's a little surprising because they're all so cheap, but even just having some bandages here um, and some alcohol wipes, that, that, that'll make a big difference. Um, in a lot of bad situations, if you have just a smallest cut, if you don't treat that, if you don't protect it, and that gets infected, even the smallest cut can quickly get out of control and turn into a really, really bad situation and really hinder your performance, even kill you if it gets infected. Um, and you do wanna take care of every little nick and cut that you have in a um, disaster situation or survival situation. Uh, so having some first aid items, again, super, super inexpensive, but fantastic thing uh, that you wanna include in your survival kit as well. So we got some paperwork here, and then we've got, this is one of the last things here. So again, this is one of these survival tools. And I was talking about this earlier that you can go with, you know, this keychain style um, screwdrivers, or they have some tools like this that have those built into them. This one looks like it doesn't have any screwdrivers, so that's why they included this. But there are some other features in this. So according to this card, this little tool has a can opener, a knife edge, a screwdriver, a ruler, or a cap opener, four position wrench, butterfly wrench, saw blade, directional direction ancillary indicator, I'm not sure what that is, two position wrench, and lanyard hole, key ring hole. Okay, so that's the lanyard hole there. So yeah, again, this thing is could be very, very helpful um, to use having a disaster situation, super inexpensive, super small. So that is everything inside this $30 survival kit. Once again, if you guys are interested in this exact kit, I'll have a link down to it in the description below. And if you wanna check out what is inside a $250 Amazon survival kit, check out my video right here, breaking that down for you. Don't forget to subscribe for more prepping and survival videos. Hit that little bell icon to get notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next video.